Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are making the Willow Granny Square Sweater. I've made this pattern before for my cardigan and someone said make it a sweater, so I made it a sweater. This is a super easy sweater to do, it's just patchwork with a bunch of granny squares put together. I know that there's a few Instagrammers that sell patterns for this, if you prefer to go and buy the pattern go ahead and buy that, but it's pretty easy just to put the squares together. You'll need yarn, two different types of hooks, scissors, stitch markers, and I will put everything in the description box below as always. But when you're ready, let's get started. Alright, this is the yarn that I am using today. I know that you guys always ask what kind of yarn I use, so this is it. I bought this from Spotlight, it's just a store here in Australia, and I used five of these maybe even like five and a half so I, I bought six I'm using a this is an eight millimeter hook this is what I used to make all of my squares and this is the willow granny square if you've made my latte cardigan this is the same pattern and I've actually since made a tutorial for this one so if you want to learn how to make the willow granny square I will link that video in the description box below or along the top here so that you can make them and I made I think 16 squares all up but I'll change angle and we'll talk about the panels all right so you're gonna need 16 of these squares. Once you've got your 16 squares, this is how it's going to look. So you'll have a front panel, which will be four pieces for me, and a sleeve panel, which again is also four panels. I'm going to do something different with this sleeve though, where I like it to be really romantic and like bubbly. So I'm going to add like a row of double crochets here, which will be like where the elbow is. But this is your front piece. This is your sleeve piece. You're going to need two lots of these for two arm panels and two, a front and a back panel here. So let's go ahead and connect some of these together and then I'll show you what we've got. All right, so I've got two squares here. We're going to connect them together. First, kind of decide which if, if there's a side that you prefer to be showing and a side that you prefer to be against skin. Um, I think my squares are all kind of the same, so I'm not too fussed about that. But go ahead and start with a slip knot. And I've actually changed to a five millimeter hook here. So you, I made my squares with an eight millimeter and then I'm changing the joining stitching to be here with this five. So insert your hook. You're going to come at the top of your work here and find your corner of your squares. And I showed it in my, in my video, but I also did this space stitching, which is just something extra. So usually the Willow Granny Square would finish here on your double crochets, but I added a space stitch. All right, so to connect your squares together, I'm taking the back loop or the two inside loops of each square and I will bring my yarn through, yarn over and now it's attached. And now I'm just going to take slip stitches. So I'm going to take the inside loops of both squares, yarn over, pull through, pull through. And that's your slip stitch. So I'm going to take this slip stitch all the way across until I reach the other corner. All right, so we're back. I connected my square together here and I also connected another one. So once you reach the end, chain one, cut your yarn, pull through and pull tight. So I've got two pieces here and this is going to be my front panel. So now go ahead and bring those together. Make sure that your um, like stitching or your seam is on the outside of your work because you want your stitches to all be on the same side. 
and bring these corners together and we'll do the same thing slip stitches all the way across here so slip knot insert your hook starting at the corner grab those inside loops attach your yarn and slip stitch all the way across on those inside loops only. All right, and I'm nearing the end here, so I thought that we could come back and do it together. But just making sure that you also get your corner pieces. And once you've taken that last one, chain one. Cut your yarn, pull through, pull tight. So this is one of your body panels. So you need two of these. So go ahead and make a second one. And next we'll do the sleeve. All right, so for your sleeve, go ahead and connect two squares together just as you did before. If you wrap this around your arm and you think, yeah, that's going to be like billowy enough for you. You can just go ahead and connect these two squares together as well. But I like to just add a little bit of length. So for me, I'm just going to attach my yarn and do three rows of double crochets on one of my squares. So I'm going to start here at the corner, attach, chain two, and take single uh, double crochets into every single stitch. When I get to these large spaces, I just put a double crochet in that space and then one on top of the previous rows double crochet. So double crochets all the way across until the very end. And I will do this for a total of three rows, but I'll show you when I get to this corner anyway, how it's looking. All right, I'm at my corner. I've taken my double crochet, chain three, turn your work, and double crochets on every single stitch. And then after this row, I'll take it one more time so that I have a total of three rows of double crochets across. All right, so I just wanted to show what I've done. So I connected two squares together and then I added the three lots of double crochets at the end here and because I like a patchworky design and I didn't want it to be like so lined up with squares I actually put the rows of three double crochets on the next panel here in the middle instead of on the side and then I mentioned that I wanted to add a little bit of length to this as well so I've just put three rows of double crochets here so now what I'm going to do is flip this over and making sure that my stitched sides are all going to be lined up and I'm going to take my corners here and we'll be slip stitching these two pieces together now. So just go ahead and slip stitch all the way across until you have one panel for the arms. Alright, so I've just taken my slip stitches all the way across. I'm at the end. Here I chain one, cut my yarn, pull through, pull tight. So now we have this square kind of panel here. And what you want to do is, so remember this long piece here is where you've added length for the elbow so our sleeve needs to go this way so now I'm going to take slip stitches all the way along here so that we have a closed in sleeve and then from here once that's done oh look I'll do that first and then I'll show you what I've got all right so I've just closed off my work here at the end so this is my sleeve now I know that I'm going to add a ribbed um, cuff for the wrist, 
But if you're happy with it being open like this and you want to keep it this way, you can stop here. If you want to add a cuffed ri uh, ribbed wrist here though, go ahead and chain three and you're going to do a round in every single stitch of double crochets. So just go ahead and this is the opening of the sleeve and take a round of double crochets in every single stitch and I will meet you back here. All right, so I've made it back to the start. Go ahead and slip stitch. And you can leave your sleeve like this. I think it just kind of makes it a little bit cleaner. So if you want a nice open sleeve, you can leave it. If you're adding that ribbed, go ahead and chain three. And depending on how tight you want your ribbing to be depends on how many decreases you do. For me though, I'm gonna do a decrease in every fifth stitch. So this is four and this next one will be my fifth. So to do this decrease, yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through three on your hook, into that next stitch, yarn over, pull through, you've got four on your hook, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. And that does uh, a decrease here. So again, I'll do four double crochets, so one, two, three, four. And in every fifth is a decrease. So one more time together, yarn over into the next stitch, pull through, there's three on your hook. Into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, there's four on your hook. Yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two. So I'm just gonna keep doing this all the way around in every fifth stitch doing a decrease until I get back to the start. All right, and I've made it back to the start and again, a slip stitch. And I just wanted to show, can you see how this is kind of pulling in a little bit? Like it's kind of shrinking. I wanted a little bit more, so I'm going to repeat it again, but this time I might do every stitch. So chain three, that counts as one. This is number two, three. And in that third stitch, I'll do a decrease. So I'll do this all the way around and then I'll meet you at the back, at the beginning. Okay, and I've reached the end of that row, slip stitch. And I think it's more evident here how it's kind of coming in. So I think that's good. Um, the next thing that you're going to do is create some ribbing. So I've already made this one. I'll teach you in the next clip how to do it, but just to make it easy, I'll show you how to attach it now. But you want to make your ribbing big enough to like go over your wrist and it's the size that you want it. And then you're going to go ahead and attach it. So for me, I'm just going to kind of place this on the inside and then you want to line it up. So sometimes, especially with this ribbing, it can still be like a little bit small. So sometimes you'll have to pull the ribbing to make it match your sleeve. But you'll just go ahead and slip stitch it on. And I will just go through every single stitch, making sure that I'm going through both the sleeve and the cuff and slip stitch it through. And if you've made my latte card again, this is the same thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and slip stitch this all the way on. And like I said, see how this is like a little bit bigger. You'll just have to pull your cuff in some areas so that your stitching lines up. All right, to make your ribbing, slip knot. And the ribbing that I have for my cuffs is 10 chains, but just make your chain long enough for the width that you want your cuff to be. All right, so once you've got the chain, that's the width of what you want your cuff to be, go ahead and come back into that last stitch with a single crochet and take single crochets all the way across.
Once you're at the end, this is what it looks like. Chain one, turn your work and find your V at the top here. And make sure you go into this first one, it can be easy to miss. But single crochets into the back loop of those Vs only. And this is what you'll be doing the entire time until you have something long enough that is your cuffs or the bottom hemming and the collar piece. So it's just back loop, single crochets, repeated and repeated. I have my cuff here, I've already attached it, but you just wanna make sure that it's enough to cover your wrist. So just put it against yourself. It does stretch a little bit, but just make sure it's enough to cover your wrist. And you'll do the same thing with the collar piece and the bottom ribbing. For my ribbing, for the collar piece and the bottom ribbing, I did it half. So I did 10 chains for this cuff, and then I've done five for the bottom ribbing and the collar. But I'll show you those when we get there. All right, and once your cuff is attached, this is what your sleeve looks like. So you're going to make two of these, and then we'll start piecing all of these panels together. Look at this guy. Friendly. Chucky. Chuck, wearing my, my ribbing. <laughs> okay, for the body, I've got my two body pieces here. I'm just going to bring them together with stitch markers first and then try it on to see how wide I want the neck piece to be. So first, make sure you've got your inside pieces facing each other. And for me, because I've just got like four squares on both sides. There's no like front or back piece. They're both the same. Um, and I'm just going to place some stitch markers in. And maybe I'll try like halfway first. And I'll just try it on and see how that looks. Okay, so I have my front and back piece uh, stitch marker here and I just put it halfway because I just wanted to see yeah so if I bring these two pieces together with slip stitches then this is long enough and then I also made a ribbing piece here which I'll attach along the collar piece and I just made this however I whatever I thought would be big enough. So connect your piece together and then make sure it's stretchy enough to go like over your head, you know what I mean? But I'm going to I'm going to slip stitch along here and then I'm going to also stitch this little collar piece on. And this collar piece is one of those pieces that I said um, were only 5 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this bring this all together and then I'll have like a vest <laughs> all right so i just wanted to show this collar piece i'm still using a five millimeter hook and i've actually placed the collar like on the inside because i've still got my outside pieces here like where you can see the the seam and i don't know i'll just start like here and i'm just going to slip stitch the same way that we did our cuffs for this collar piece and the same thing with the cuffs there are going to be some sections where I'm gonna have to pull this collar piece tighter uh, yeah tighter to be able to like fit so all the way around same as before okay so here is my vest with the little collar piece Next, we're gonna attach these arm pieces. So I know that my arm is like one square. So I'm going to actually stitch from this corner up to this square and then I'll start attaching the sleeve. And I also made this five chain ribbing to go at the bottom, which I'll attach in the same way. So corner piece first, slip knot, and I'm going to use my five millimeter hook. 
I'm going to make sure that my work has the stitch showing so that everything is the same size or the same way and then find my corners and I'm just going to slip stitch all the way to this square here. at my corner now. So making sure that my sleeve is also inside out, I'm just going to grab one side of the sleeve, so this is open, and attach it all along the top here with slip stitches. Okay, quick check to make sure we're happy with it. same thing on the other side and attach the waist ribbing. So just go ahead and attach those last pieces in the same way and I know that you guys always ask me for measurements. So here is a video of all of the measurements, the measurement of the squares, the measurement from shoulder to shoulder, the measurement of the arm and the measurement of the length. I will add these in the description box below as well but when making this you just want to make sure that your willow square goes from your shoulder to like your chest and then that should make this sweater big enough and that is it you guys that is the willow granny square sweater i hope you enjoyed this video thumbs up if you did and i will see you in the next one bye mm -hmm.